okay, so I'm going to introduce you to a student that one of the students that I'm most proud of. Um, he did an amazing job with his IELTS test, and now he's working as a doctor in London. And I asked him to come on just to give you guys a little bit of extra motivation, and he's also going to give you some tips on how he got the score that he needed. So I'll just welcome you, Dr. Idris. Can you tell me just a little bit of background information about you first? Uh, uh, my name is Idrus Elmi. I am from, from Somaliland. I actually moved to the UK 10 months ago and I, I just live here with my wife. Mm -hmm. And what, what job are you doing there in the UK? Um, in the UK, back home I was a doctor. So when mm -hmm. I moved to the UK, I wanted to start my career as a doctor. Mm -hmm. But uh, one of the prerequisites is to pass IELTS exam. Mm -hmm. And unless you pass IELTS exam, nobody, uh, General Medical Council will not allow you to sit for the other medical exams to assess you uh, whether you are a, a doctor or not. Mm -hmm. So um, I found it difficult to get into, I mean, to pass IELTS exam and in the first place. So um, now I'm already moved to my life. So I'm working on the other parts of uh, medical exams, which is, uh, tremendously easier compared to IELTS exam. <laughs> really? I, would, <laughs> I wouldn't yeah. have thought the IELTS exam was more difficult than medical exams, uh, yeah. but then it, that's interesting. So what's, what did you really struggle with when it, when it came to IELTS? Was there a particular skill that you struggled with or was it just everything? What, what did you really need help with? Um, to be honest, um, you know, IELTS exam is a spe specific English test. Uh, it's a standardized uh, test. So um, they designed a special way that's different from other, other English uh, exams. Um, so in, the in the, my, my first attempt, I was trying to get experience on how it feels like, you know, the IELTS uh, test. So I paid the money and I realized that uh, my writing was way below the standard because uh, because of the requirements they they ask for example in in task one uh, i'm not i'm not used to uh, i didn't used to uh, uh, writing about graphs so that was not part of my curriculum uh, in my school so i i found it difficult and and in my first attempt i got uh, uh, six and despite working harder and harder in my second in my second attempt i got 5.5 5. Okay. yeah so that was really the hardest part in my in in in, in ils exam and why do you think just hard work it's, itself didn't help you improve why do you think that you know you worked really hard and you still got you know around the same same score why do you, what do you think was the problem yeah the problem was um, in my first attempt, I was thinking like, why don't you try your luck? Because I, my English background was, I mean, uh, I was taught in English in, in school, in high school, uh, but we didn't communicate in English. So English was my third language. So mm -hmm. I, I just assumed that if I try my luck, I might pass the exam. So I paid the money. And I didn't realize that, you know, IELTS exam needs specific structures. There are mm -hmm. thousands of structures. Uh, there are thousands of right structures and thousands also wrong structures uh, yeah. so i practiced a lot using a lot of uh, websites free websites i just google it ILS uh, writing and i got like thousands of advices different mm -hmm. advices so i confused myself mm -hmm. i tried um one of these advices in the first attempt and then i failed i, I tried the second attempt and that also made my, my grades even worse so mm -hmm. I think because of the way I structured. Yeah, it is, it's one of the biggest problems out there that there's just so much conflicting information and some of it is correct, some of it's just not. Um, yeah. But even if you're looking at, you know, five or six different websites all giving you the correct information, that's all confusing because it's all different. Um, yeah. yeah so, so you've identified a really common problem there. Um, so yeah. what did you do to get you're writing up to the score that was required to be a doctor here in the UK? Um, I have to say it was a good given um, gift to see your website in Facebook. 
And to be honest, um, I've seen a lot of uh, students um, recommending me your your uh, web, uh, website uh, because your website is just a f uh, free. And then I, they said, why don't you try there? And I tried and I've seen a lot of people giving positive uh, comments. And that's when I decided to uh, come into your course. And actually it was really helpful because um, when I, Eyeless, eyeless uh, lessons are really boring, really <laughs> boring. But the way you structured uh, your tutorials are very interesting. So that mm. is really the difference because you need, you know, you need motivation. Mm -hmm. You need the desire to learn more because uh, while you have something which is boring, and you cannot continue learning. So I love the way you structured. Uh, your videos and they helped me because they teach me step by step how to write introduction, how to paraphrase, how to uh, plan ahead, and which is really the most difficult one uh, in my first time because I have lost a lot of time uh, um, um, writing. Not I didn't even plan because I didn't know you know planning was part of writing. Um, so that really helped me because uh, it gave me like the compass. Uh, mm -hmm. which was telling me which direction I'm going to. Excellent. So, That's a really nice analogy for the, comp yeah. the plan. I, I usually say it's like having Google Maps. It shows yeah. you exactly where to go and what to do. So yeah. if you were to give me some um, or give other students who are struggling with writing in particular, if you were to give them some advice, some free advice, what would you give? What would you say to them? So we've already uh, talked about planning a little bit. Anything yeah. else that you would, you would say to students? I would tell them, uh, because I know as a doctor, you don't have much time uh, to lose uh, preparation of uh, um, IELTS exam, which is not your uh, area that mm -hmm. you are going to work, but it's really one of the prerequisites that you have to fulfill. Uh, one advice I would give is really the advice I got from you, which is like um, uh, perfect practice makes perfect, because I used to think like, you know, practice makes perfect, but that proved it wrong because I practiced a lot of resources which were really, really bad. And that showed in my result because I got, you know, from six to 5.5. 5. Uh, so I, I would definitely tell them to uh, not rely on any website that says Cambridge based uh, books because um, um, they have to, uh, follow you know the the rules of the mm -hmm. of the of the exam and and i would recommend them to 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 come to uh ILS advantage and to see because you know it, it, it doesn't cost anything because it's a free website in the first place and nobody forces them to pay anything unless they see you know how the structure is there so i would definitely uh, you know recommend them to visit ilsadvantage.com uh, because that's really very handy, anyone who mm -hmm. wants to, to pass the IELTS exam. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's a really important point because there's, there's, a, lot of, there's a lot of excellent um, information out there, but there's also, especially when it comes to practice tests, there's a lot of fake practice tests and things that don't really work. So yeah. my, a really good tip, as you just said, would be only use official practice materials. So you'll get yeah. those on Cambridge English website, IDP website, British Council website, IELTS.org. There's a huge yeah. number of free tests there that people yeah. can use and they're real tests because, yeah. you know, imagine if you were doing the driving test, but you, yeah. when you were learning, they just told you to do it on a motorbike or in a truck yeah. or something like that. It's just, you sure. know, it's not uh, reflective of, of what you're going to face in the real test. Yeah. So just what, what are your plans for the future then? And what, what are you going to be able to do with the IELTS test? Now? Yeah, you know, uh, IELTS uh, test really has transformed my life uh, because now um, I can start, you know, planning uh, other stuff like, you know, uh, other medical exams and then start to work in, in, in London. And mm -hmm. my, my plan is just to be part of NHS and National Health System of the UK which needs a lot of health professionals. Mm -hmm. And actually I'm so, so happy. And whenever I see, you know, a lot of, you know, the other good thing about uh, ILS Advantage is that when I got into, into, uh, into the group, Facebook group, 
that you created, which is really a private one. Um, I've met there a lot of doctors um, mm -hmm. who who didn't uh, who not only helped me, uh, uh, you know, the, the discussions of IELTS, but also other medical, you know, questions mm -hmm. we have and other requirements of the medical exams. So really, it's a group that you can find, you know, your your uh, profession. If you are a nurse, there are a lot of nurses. There are a lot of engineers. Mm -hmm. So it's really amazing. So I'm so happy that you know. Uh, I'm I'm moving on my way, my life and you know my career. Well, we're glad to have you as a doctor here in the UK. Yeah, you know, thank <laughs> we you. need it. We need a lot more people. I think after Brexit, so <laughs> it's, good, it's good to have one more good person here. Yeah. So thank you very thank much you. for for sharing your story with everybody. And yeah, good luck you. in your future. And if you thank need you. anything, you have my email address. Just let me know. Okay. Thank you. Thank you very much.